Well, hello there. This is Sawdust Solutions with Buck. I am Buck, and welcome to my shop. Today, we're doing shaker-style doors for the dry sink. Stick with me, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. I'm cutting the rails and styles at two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to come up with the measurements on these rails and styles, rails, styles. Uh, okay, what I'm thinking now is two and a half inches thick, wide. Um, yeah, two and a half inches wide for both. Um, Styles, uh, we're looking at I am looking at 15 is going to be too much, it won't fit. Probably 14 and 7 eighths. So there'll be styles be 14, 7 H, like I say, by two and a half inch. And then the width of the, so I'm looking at 13 inches. Thirteen inches rail. Of course, now we'll have to subtract two and a half inches on each side, uh, and then add the 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 tongue part. So there's going to be thirteen. The door's going to be thirteen by fourteen and seven eighths. There'll be two of them. So we just need to figure our what the rails is going to be because we'll have to do some math on that one. So basically I'm needing 13 inches, right? However, I have to subtract the uh, two sty uh, styles, which are two and a half each. That makes five inches. So I'm subtracting five inches. It leaves eight inches. However, what sticks out right here, it's got to be added back to it, which is three quarters. That's three eighths on each side. So my rails needs to be eight and three quarter inches long. Well, I got the styles and rails cut to length and the thickness. In other words, I'm ready to uh, to use the, uh, so what's it called? Shaker style, style and rails. Uh, white side, uh, the two bits. I already got one in there. But uh, I was going to use them to cut. This would be the first set. I did a, a trial run. Uh, the trick to this whole thing is knowing the dimensions of what this thing is cutting, but the, the trick to the whole thing is uh, from one bit to other, getting it adjusted right. That's, that's the trick. That's, if you could do that, you've got it. So let me show you how I lay this stuff out because it's so easy to cut the wrong side. So I've got them laid out like the doors it's going to be, you know. You know, these are the styles, these are the rails. I got two doors alike. Uh, this one thing I need to check, I'll check it here in a minute, but you need a groove all the way around the inside. You need the rails 
cut with a tongue on all four sides. So to comp the way I accomplish this is this way. If you flip them over because you want to rest your off the front, it don't matter how the back does. If it's off a little bit, nobody ever know the difference. But you want that front right. So we're resting off the front. And the tape, you notice it's offset. That means this is a side that gets the groove. This is a side that gets the groove and so on. So if I'm cutting, getting ready to cut on the on the table saw, uh, router table, if I'm not seeing blue tape, something's wrong. So I've chosen a, a backer board here with a 90 degree. That helps the narrow uh, rails to cut the ends and it holds it at a 90 degrees. So we end up with a, a good tongue. So now it is time to uh, switch bits. So I kill the power to the router table because we do not want this thing to come on. Now we're ready to cut the groove. So I put a stop in right over here. I, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do and see if these things are the same. So I can come over here and touch it to the stop, and we'll check that bearing because you just just want right even with the bearing. Ooh, it didn't work. So you don't need it rocking. See like that right there. So we're gonna. Oh, it moved on me. Huh. Let's see if that makes any difference. That stop didn't do too much. Now you take your time and get this right. We go right there. It's just touching, but there's no rock to it. That's what you're looking for. So what we're gonna do, if you remember, our tape needs to be up and the tape is favoring that side. So that means this is the side with the groove. So that means it's face down. So we're gonna Go down through here and get them grow. Now all four of them get this.
I don't know if you uh, noticed, but that light in there, I don't know, something about the hertz, and, you know, it's, it leaves a black line. I don't notice it so much in out here, but if you remember, the, the, the tape represented the backside, so it's actually going to be like this. So let's, let's see if we can't. Those bits kind of make a tight fit. Uh, I may have to work on them just a little because time you put glue on that, it might, might make it a little too tight. But actually, Oh, good gracious, yeah. I think I finally figured it out. But, uh, so before I do glue it together, I'm going to make me a, an oak panel. It'll go in and groove, and you put it all together then. You leave the panel loose for expansion and contraction. It, it only gets glued on, the, on these joints here. So, let's do the, let me work on the panel on the inside, then we move forward. Well, we got our panels, uh, to size I got it down to where they would fit in the groove you want it to move around the, sh the shaker part of it I mean you don't want you want to be able to move with seasonal movement but it's going to take two one I, I didn't have one wide enough but if you see it's not it's not seamless. I, there's a way you can do this, and it's seamless. So you got to get them on the same plane, same angle. So what you close it up, this is the, the, the part that's going to, you want. This is the front. You close it up. Then you, you line it up the best you can. And the thing about it is, my vice ain't deep enough. So I'm gonna I'm gonna vice it together. You do, you want it to stay together and not move. And then I'm gonna turn it right into the vice. I'll set it in there as far as I can. Now you got it together. What we're gonna do is take a hand plane, and what's gonna happen here. We're going to hand plane this thing until we can get a full shave and come off both sides. I almost got the full shaving on both of them. <laughs> almost. Try this little block plane. That was all. There you go. This is what I need. A little small deal like it right there. Well, come on now. See what that looks like. So let me bring in here and let y'all look at that. He can't really tell it. And it's dang not going to, it's not going to stick out like a sore thumb by no means, but I mean, you, you can't, I mean, you're, you're right against it. You can't tell it. So, uh, that, that's the way I do it. And I've had good results with it. 
Oh, I've got my clamp set up. We're going to go ahead and glue this thing up. That way we'll have this part of it done. It's about ready to call it a day. And that way we'll go ahead and And you want to make sure we want to be able, we want to make sure what that thing, you just want to squeeze it out. I mean, you put too much pressure here, you wind up bowing it and all like that. So we want to make sure yeah, it's, it's squeezing out all the way. All right, it's not bowing. Then I take a clamp and go, clamp it to other direction, and it kind of has a counteract to it. So I think we'll be all right right there. Just till the glue squeezes out, and you got enough pressure. If we'll get a well, just want to get the whole thing covered. There, there we go. All right. All right. Yeah, squeezing out. So it's squeezing out. Trying to bow just a little back off, just a little. There you go. We're looking for just the right amount here. Well, all right then. That's all it is to it. We're going to let that set up. Probably just let it set up tomorrow. I got some sawing to do. Get it the right size. and So we'll, we'll take care of all that tomorrow. That's going to do it for today. Y'all have a good evening. Well, good morning. I hope y'all had a, uh, a wonderful night, wonderful evening. I think uh, these things are set up now, don't y'all? Let's take a look at them. We'll, we'll see what we're looking at here. We were going to be all right. I got me a little card scraper. I'm going to try to knock that glue off of it. Let's we'll see if we can get this thing to blend together. Get them off there for they knock me in the head. Let's see. Yeah, let's see here. Let me get that glue seam off of that off of there. I think it'll be fine. Let's just see what we can do. Get me a car scraper. I'm gonna try to get that.
now that we've got the seam, it's smoothed down, ready to go. Yeah. Now, now I need to cut it to where to fit inside the frames. I got one frame here I hadn't put together yet. I got one I put together so we, I know what the measure should be. We're just going to make sure that it is. But the thing about it is, I got some rough edges on the places on the edge. This opportunity now, I can place it in here and get it where most of that stuff is gone. So I have that opportunity there. That looks like right there. So I'm going to mark what I want to see. This is what I want to see. Now I, now I need to add what I'm going to add to go in the groove. The up and down is fine. Wherever probably want to see as much as this and cut as much as that. That that don't really matter. However, this is this is the same way. If I go that way and I go this way, they would kind of match, wouldn't they? In other words, they would kind of match if I orient if I'm orientating this way. If I didn't have the tear out, that would be good. So what I want to do here, kind of the same thing. So I'm, this is what I'm going to see. So now I need to calculate. Uh, I think it's 3 eighths. But I don't want to go 3 eighths because it's going to expand and contract this way. So I'm going to. If I go a quarter inch shorter, that's an eighth inch on each side. It's just a wet time. Humidity, I had we had rain yesterday too. So if I want an eighth inch on each side, I think if anything, it's going to shrink a little. But it would give it some room the other way. So I'm going to take those measurements and add an eighth to each side. I just realized... I said that wrong. When I mark this to what I want to see, I want to leave the eighth inch gap. It's three eighths each way. So I want to mark it on a quarter. Further, we would go in a quarter, and it gives an eighth of an inch play inside each side to make room to grow. I said an eighth inch. I'm going to move it over a quarter and allow an eighth inch. I don't know if I said that right or not, but basically, well, basically what I've got, it's, the opening right here is eight inches dead on it. The opening. It goes three eighths on each side, so eight and three quarters is the total. So if I wanted an eighth on each side, so I will need to cut this eight and a half. Make sense? Just thought I, I, I got to thinking about it, and I, I don't think I said that correctly. Uh, so I thought I'd come back and clear that up. The panels is eight and three quarter total width. I'm going eight and a half, and that give me an eighth of an inch on each side. Hope that cleared that up. The other way, which would be along the styles, the, the height of it, I've got the height of the opening, nine and seven eighths. All right, nine and seven eighths, two, three eighths, and each side is three quarters. So that's 10 and five eighths. So I, what I'm thinking, this is in grain. It's not going to be any growing this way. So I'm just going to allow a sixteenth on each end, and that gives me uh, what ten and a half. So it's going to be ten and a half tall by eight and a half wide. So that's what I'll need to pick the areas where that eight and a half by ten and a half will give me the best look, if you know what I mean.
now that we got our panels squared away the way to do this I'm just test fitting I I'm not gluing all right you bring this in What you think now? That's the back. I think it's going to look fine. Well, it is time to glue up. So, I have it laid out. Surely I won't screw this up. So, Pulls right together. All right. See how much darker this is? I may have to sand that off. It's a little darker, but it's it's not near as dark as that. I might be able to live with that. Thing. It's different, but it ain't as dark as that. That's going to make the uh, <clears throat> yes. The thing about it is, what it is, you see how close that is? I mean, that's dirt down here. That's just one of that's dark. So I kind of cleaned off that side over there. Um, that is Red Oak 215. See, Midwax Red Oak 215. That's what I did the other with, but it was an older batch that I've had around here, and I finally run out of it. So what I'm thinking about doing, I'm going to go ahead and do the back of one of these. And just see so I don't know this is the hardest part for me doing something like this getting getting it to match and whatnot but it's pretty light and I like it that way I want to uh,
I've tried. I'll show them to you here in a second. I've actually tried all kinds. And this is the closest thing I can get to it. One thing about it, no longer than I'm leaving it on there, no thick than I'm putting on it. <laughs> ain't going to use much, is it? Yeah, a little dab's gonna go a long way. But that, that's pretty. I don't, that is that is lovely. So let's just see. What it's going to take to get that little run. Gotta get it even. Ah, guys, that, that looks good. I hate to leave that open. Something ball in it or what have you. Yeah, let me take that around there and we'll just eyeball that thing. Well, I tell you. I don't know how I don't know if I have to go over it all I guess I will but it's just a just a tick different color isn't it but it's not as dark as that thing I left it on there way too long but that is I don't know that that's all I've got. Let me show you. I went through a bunch. Look under that CNC machine. I I went through a a ton, and I I don't know what I did with the samples, but a red oak two fifteen is the closest thing to it, and actually that old was closer to it than that. When I looked through it, through the camera, it looks off more than looking through it in real life. I mean, I can tell there's a tick difference, but not, when I look through the camera, it looks like a lot of difference. When I first set it up, I thought I had it. I guess it's drying. But then when I look through the camera at it, it looks further off than in person. Oh, uh, I'm about half colorblind. I mean, for real. I went to join the Air Force, and that was part of the thing. They give you a colorblind test, and I did not pass. They said they wouldn't keep you out of the Air Force, but it would uh, might dictate what job you had. They wouldn't want me to be an electrician dealing with colored wires, which I took a 200-pair telephone cable that broke and put it all back together and it worked so I can see some colors sometimes I have problems with is it red or is it caution 
depending on so I, I keep up the top one is red the middle one you know that way but all right now think about laying down <laughs> oh gosh so you know or if sitting there flashing by itself i look at what everybody else is doing first stop and i'll stop if they're not i'll i just treat it as a yield sign so so i'm gonna, I'm gonna get somebody to look at that before i go much further i may do the other and just sort of set it up there but this is what i i was i left it on there five minutes but you see how long i left that on there uh seconds i mean i just wiped it you know which that's the easiest way to do it you ain't got to set and come back and you know that divider here is too dark what do you think about the doors oh they're pretty Aren't they pretty? I think they're a little different. Looking through the camera, it looks a lot different. But and by eye, I mean you. It don't stand out like a sore thumb. I don't think. Do you? I think that's a golden oak. Have we looked for a golden oak? I don't know. We're going to Lowe's today. Why don't we look for golden Get oak? Part. That's the back side. Oh. The back side looks that good? Well, yeah. Yeah, it, there's knots and stuff that the other side don't have. Oh, I can't wait to see the other side. Yeah, see, it's just a little off. Well, I don't know if you're going to get it exact. I know. But, you know, I left this on five minutes. Yeah. And I rubbed it off. This here... I rubbed it off as I put it on. I mean, it was just literally on, wiped right off. It's got, the, it's just that the original's got more of a golden tone right, to it. Right, it's, yeah. So we'll go by there and check that out. So it's so I'll have to sand that down because even, even at the best, it's too dark. Yeah. I can't leave it on there like that. It's pretty though. Yeah, if I would have to do it all. We gotta do the. I'd have to send every bit of that down and, and do it all. No, we can't want to do that. That's, uh, but you'd be proud at the very end. What? Well, yeah. You'd be going, because every time, if not, you'd be looking at that, going, mm, wish I had it. Wish yeah, I, had. I know. Sitting there. Well, eating. we'll go by Lowe's today. We'll. So I showed them in the YouTube land. I showed them that all that we went through to. And that's the closest thing we could find. And actually, the Red Oak 215 that we ran out of seemed to be closer because you can touch what it did the back with. Yeah. I mean, that would have been good enough. But then it was all mid-wax, you know. And it wasn't like it's a different brand of Red Oak 215. It's still mid-wax. And uh, that's the reason why we got it. But it's a little different. And as soon as I put it on, it looks just like that. In just a moment, it's when it dries. It's it, it, so I'm just wondering if I can take. I may take some shellac and put on that and just see what it does to it. But I'm testing right now. But we'll go see what kind of stain they got. Try that. I mean, if we we'll try, I've never mixed stain oh, and to get a color. I, I, you know, we may try to dabble in that. You get a natural, and I might, I might try that here in a minute. Right now, I'm changing the blades in my planer. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's record a list. What I'm going to do, I am going to find my drill. i done something with it. And what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and mount this other door. I'm going to take it back off once I decide on the finish, but I'm but all I do is take the screws out and put it right back. But what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna line this thing up and see what it looks like. I think I had it figured for these shims right here. We will double check it. Goes all the way back, don't it? Okay, this is it. Yeah. kind of even right here so those are the shims so what I guess I need to do is go ahead and mount them 
right here. I'll measure the same ones over there. What I'll try to do is put these hinges in the same spot. So from the deck up, two and nine sixteenths, and from here down, two and five eighths. What if I make that? It's between nine sixteenths and five eighths. So what I want to do, two, well, let me get over here. See, one, two, halfway between, between that, here is two, two, and five eighths is right there. I'm just wondering if I can get that thing more pronounced right here. Where I, I gotta be able to see it. Right there. And that one is right. Right there. So. So which one do I put them on first? Why don't we put them on the... Why don't we put them on here first? And then, no. What would be the best way to do it? Uh, so this thing's going to go. Let's measure to the bottom. Two and five eighths. And the top. So this will go just like it right there. So I will need to, well, that's nice to the bottom right there. That looks better, don't it? Some ain't right here. That dude is bent. I'm going to go straighten that out. Hang on, let me go straighten that out. Well, it's probably going to happen more than what we think. But usually once or twice a year, it's all I do. He has to have a high right there. Let me get my whooping hammer. If y'all remember my whooping hammer, I, I made a, uh, my handle give up on me and I made me an, a new handle. I just love it to make it fit your hand. Um, that thing is, yeah, it needs to go down right there. So I'm just wondering. Now, let's see. I do not want to tear it up, though. Did a tick. May have to uh, may have to uh, get a little bit creative here. I don't know. Might need one of those. Might be one of those. I don't want to tear it up, do I? I do not want to tear it up, so let's try not to. It's gonna be being it's gonna be easy enough. Pick more. 
How about that? Dirt like that. Hold it in there. Okay, I'm, I believe I can live with that. So I got my my hinge. I believe it'll sit laying here a little better now. Oh yeah. So let me find center of this thing. That's right there. Let's go ahead and get that one. You want to? And where was there? Yeah. How deep? Oh yeah, it should be plenty. Yeah, it should be plenty. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and mount that one. You want to? Yes. Yeah, number. So what we have, that really works good, but this one over here, just a little bit tight, but it ain't as tight as it was a minute ago. I believe that just needs to be broke in. I think that is nearly a new, that no, mm, wow. but anyway. Now what I have to do, is, you know, this door holds that door. So I'll have to cut a rabbit on here and then here where they meet in the middle, then this one holds, this one will hold this one shut. And it, when the rabbits are done, this will be smooth. So, so that's where we're at right now. I guess we're gonna work on that rabbit now. Well, that's what we're hunting right there. Yep, now let's go try it on, on the dry scene. So we've got the rabbits cut on the end, opposite from one another to where they'll be flush whenever we get her shut together. So let's see if we can't quit mount these things back on here and we'll give these little fellas a try. <laughs> Moment of truth, so to speak. Okay. Well, that's pretty good for a All right. Is that a shadow? Well, yeah, it sure is. Oh. Uh, yeah. May have to put me a magnet in there, but I'll cross that bridge later on. But now, if we can get our, our stain right, we can stain that dude, we'll be ready to go. Yeah, turn me a knob Put me a knob right there. What I've got, I've tried all kinds of stuff. Still trying, look at all that stuff under there. 
I've been trying this and I've come, I probably never will find something dead eye on it because that dry sink is probably over 100 years old, easy. But what finishes there is pretty good. But this is what I come up with. This is uh, Red Oak 215. I use 25% of that and then 75% of the Golden Golden Oak 210B. So the recipe so far that's working, 25%, I use 5 milliliter, 20 milliliter. I use it in syringe, so I'm pretty I'm pretty close right there. I did it on a board where I got three times on it, and this seems to work. This one's been on there for 30 minutes. Well, it's dried now, but because most of it looked good <clears throat> while it was wet. But after it dried, it kind of went away. But so this here I did yesterday, and it had been sitting up there. Right now... That is as close as I've been able to get. Uh, I'm going to continue to work on it. and may go back to the store. See, it's a little off, but it's really close. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it's close enough that this whole front will be this. And then what I wind up doing is that top, I'll probably redo it with the, with what I call the superstructure and to make it match. I think it's going to be close enough. It, it'd be refinishing that whole thing, you know what I mean. I think I'm going to call this video right here. Uh, when I stain, give me more time to, so I'm about 55 minutes in this video. And I wanted to spend some time on the drawer when I get ready. So I'd say it'd be this long on the drawer the time I get it with the blind dovetails. Because I've never done a serpentine or a curved drawer front. I was going to do blind dovetails. And so I think it warrants a video by itself. But I can do the finish when I do the finish on this or the structure too, and that'll give me more time. I think I may have all I can do with the stain, but yet that'll give me more time to find some different and, and mix and match. And it'd be nice to find it. I like that. I, I, it'd be nice to find that, but uh, I guess given enough time and, and enough samples, I guess I could, but um what i've got I, is not bad at all i've got it wrote down and, and all that so i may i give me time to fine tune it to see if i can get it just a little closer but meanwhile uh, i'm gonna call this one here and call this part two uh doors to the uh dry sink and then uh I, i'll go ahead and release it and then uh, I'll start on the, I got a couple of little, little projects I need to do. And then, then I'm going to come in here and start that drawer. Uh, kind of looking forward to that. I like making dovetail drawers anyway. But, uh, yeah, I, that's, that's what I'm planning on doing right now. And I hope y'all hang in here with me throughout this whole series. I know it's long, but I, I, I feel like the detail is necessary. Uh, you know. Uh, I like to be able to put enough out there if y'all wanted to do one of these like this doors with uh, shaker style shaker style drawers that y'all can follow along and do it um, but uh, at some point I probably wind up putting a magnet to that would be interesting that needs to be pulled back just a little little stuff like that but I appreciate you watching if y'all made it all the way this far, <laughs> y'all are the troopers for sure. So uh, y'all uh, 
If you hadn't already, like and subscribe and leave me a comment and tell me what you think about the dry sink. I'm thinking when I get done this thing, it's going to be, uh, I think my wife's going to be proud of it. But anyway, I'm going to leave it off on this one, and I will see you guys on the next ones, guys and gals. I know there's gals out there and they're good woodworkers for sure. But uh, I will see y'all on the next one, and y'all be safe.